Chris McPherson, Vice President, Sales and Marketing, Asia Pacific, Raritan. Hi, Rashida. Hi. Um, so tell us about your company and the services you offer. Okay, Raritan's been around for about uh, 20 years. Um, we started operations in 1985, and for the last 20 years we've been providing KVM solutions. Mm -hmm. Basically that's uh, keyboard, video and mouse solutions into the data center environment. Um, the purpose for this is to provide access, control and monitoring of servers in the data center. At the same time, the more recent times, we've also moved into uh, what's known as intelligent PDUs. So uh, more into power control and monitoring into the data center environment as well. So you were established in 1985. When mm -hmm. was your Singapore office set up? We actually set the Singapore office up about 18 months ago. Oh, okay. but, um, but effectively, we, we've been operating in Singapore since about 1998, 1999 through distributors. So the model that uh, Raritan has throughout the world is we're very much a, a two-tier distribution uh, company, very much relying on the channel. So we work through distributors as well as through reseller partners. So initially as we set up operations in each country, we do that via a distribution network and then with resellers as well. So who are some of your Singapore clients? Um, at this stage, given that we are in the data center environment, it's uh, fairly confidential as far as the type of equipment and data centers as you can understand. But uh, obviously, you know, we are very much into the, uh, the banking and finance sector. We're also into utilities and um, across into manufacturing as well, and obviously into the government sector across the region. So from Singapore, we actually look after um, the, I, I manage the whole of uh, Asia Pacific. And so as we look at all of the market segments that we, we operate within, it's predominantly these market segments across the, uh, the various countries. There has been a lot of buzz about green IT. What is green IT and why should companies care about having a green IT strategy? Right. A very good question. I think in relation to, to, uh, to green, it's, uh, it's a bit of an overused term at the moment in the sense that I, I saw an article in a paper recently in the region that talked about green being overused to the point of it's, it's losing its value. But at the same time, there are many definitions about green and I think they are, they're appropriate for every market segment and industry that we look at. Specifically, say for a, a data center, some of the, uh, the areas that people might want to look at in a data center that promotes the green environment would obviously be um, the maximum utilization of computing resources, uh, minimizing the cost of those resources, gaining efficiency out of those resources, and then uh, decreasing the overall footprint of carbon, the carbon footprint that, uh, that, that those resources are putting out into the environment. So I think there, there are quite a number of solutions, but uh, that's an area that we actually look at. As far as um, green IT is concerned as well, if we look at, uh, say, th there are a lot of uh, vendors and IT companies associated with, uh, with the market when it comes to a data center. And so you've got those organizations that are specifically on the facility side, and we have those organizations that are on the IT side. From a facility side, they would be looking at uh, power consumption, mm -hmm. they would be looking at uh, cooling systems, uh, more efficient uh, um, data center design, more efficient cooling systems, and maybe on the IT side, we'll be looking at uh, lower cost chips or lower power consumption chips, we're looking at uh, sleep mode uh, devices in the servers, and looking at, uh, at virtualization and consolidation. So looking at all these various aspects that really bring into the consolidation of green IT in a data center. So why should companies care about having a green IT strategy? Because of efficiency, energy efficiency? Well, I think uh, as we look at that, there's got to be a bottom line for the, for the organization because green, just for the sake of green, is not going to cut it for a CEO and it's not going to cut it for an IT manager as well. So there has to be some level of benefit that, uh, that somebody is gaining out of the, uh, the green. So I think what we're seeing is that um, if you look at power consumption overall, it's estimated today that in a data center, power consumption is less than 25% of an overall IT spend in the data center. But that's growing at about 18% year on year. So um, 
uh, a 2007 study by the EPA estimated that uh, power consumption in, in the data centre will double in the next five years. So obviously that adds cost overall to, uh, to the increases within a data centre environment. If we also look at an IT manager's budget, generally the budget for an IT manager over the past 15 years has been fairly static. So what we've seen, we've seen an increase in the number of servers and utilisation of servers. We actually see an increase in, uh, in the equipment that is actually being used in a data centre, such as data storage, uh, communications equipment, backup solutions, as well as the server. And all of these are adding additional cost, along with now we're going to see a doubling of cost of power. So if we can start to effectively utilise green technology and reduce the overall consumption within a data centre, then it starts to lower our cost and at the same time it has a benefit on, on, the, on, the, uh, on society as a whole, on the organisation because it reduces cost uh, for the organisation. Um, we also see governments uh, now have criteria for organisations. There's a lot of policy within governments. There's policies within organisations and even policies within organisations within the data centre itself. So as we put all of these fundamentals together, it, it really is driving efficiency and cost reduction and then being a good organisation at the same time in the community. Do you know how much power IT systems consume in Singapore? Globally, um, power in a data center is about 2%. So, um, so I'm sure uh, if we extrapolate that generally across mature uh, countries, we're probably seeing about the same level of power consumption from a data center. So if we, if we look at that and then we look at the overall uh, cost of that, if we say data center efficiency is going to double, or sorry, uh, data center power consumption is going to double in the next five years, that becomes a significant uh, effect on the overall power consumption as well as carbon footprint globally. So it's important that data centers start to pay attention to these, uh, this situation. At the same time, there's also talk that, uh, that data centers are consuming so much power now that, uh, that it's starting to draw power from the grid. Um, in a global environment, especially in mature countries. So where a data centre is located is having a major impact on the, um, the power consumption of that community as well. So all of these factors are starting to play as far as the IT manager and the facilities manager in redesigning uh, data centres to be very much more cost effective and green. Can you give examples of how companies can cut down their energy costs by using a green IT strategy? Yeah, I think uh, as we look at uh, some of the areas uh, within a data centre, uh, there's immediate, the EPA also estimates that, uh, that there could be 25% savings in a data centre by using current technologies by better design. But with these other technologies um, that I just mentioned, such as uh, new data centre design technologies, um, say cooling, more efficient cooling. So one thing that we do see in data centres is that uh, people turn on the air conditioning and just make the, the whole data centre very cold. Whereas if we affect our, the cooling to where the hotspot is in the data centre, then we can reduce the, uh, the power consumption because we're cooling where the hotspot is. If we look at uh, water cooling um, systems, so that's on the, um, on the facility side. On the IT side, talking about uh, utilizations of chips in servers that are reducing consumption of power already. So replacing old server equipment and replacing old equipment that is in the data center. Also looking at, uh, at sleep modes for, uh, for servers as well. So when a server is not being utilized, actually um, turn it off basically. And that's where technology such as um, Raritan's um, intelligent PDU come into play because remote monitoring, you can actually, at, uh, at the outlet level metering, we can monitor what's going on with the server, and then you can actually remotely turn that server off. So, uh, so that therefore effectively reducing the overall power consumption of a server that's not being utilized.